Uh, hello, my dear students. Uh, today, inshallah, we're going to start chapter six, which is uh, about emotions and moods. Uh, first, we're going to uh, differentiate between emotions and mood. Um, the wide uh, or the broad range of feelings that people experience, uh, we call it affect. Affect uh, can be divided into uh, emotions or moods. Uh, let's differentiate between them. First, we're going to start by emotions. Uh, emotions uh, are caused by specific event. For example, if someone uh, got me a present, so I'm going to feel happy or surprised by that present. So the feeling of happiness or surprise, this is what we call emotions. So it is caused by a specific event. Uh, this feeling is going to um, to uh, be very brief in duration, just seconds or minutes. So uh, the cause, uh, or, or sorry, the duration of emotion uh, is going to be uh, uh, short. Uh, it will last just seconds or minutes. It is going to be accompanied by facial expression. Just I'm going to be uh, surprised. This is going to be um, uh, shown on my face or I'm going to be happy. This is going to be shown on my face. Um, uh, emotions are uh, very numerous. Uh, it can be happiness, sadness, fearness, anger, anger surprise, and so on. Uh, also, it is action-oriented in nature, which means that always people uh, are trying to uh, to do an action uh, to support uh, how do they feel for example if i'm happy from someone i'm going to hug him i'm going to kiss him i'm going to thank him i'm going to shake hands with him and so on if i'm going to uh, to be angry from someone i'm going to leave him so you're going to do an action to support how do you feel this is the part of emotions let's go to the part of the mood uh, mood is uh, often a general, uh, it's caused it's general and unclear, which means that sometimes I wake up in the morning and I feel, I, I, find, I found myself that I'm in a bad mood or in a good mood. I don't know why. What caused that? I don't know. Just I woke up in the morning, I found my, myself in a good mood today or in a bad mood. I don't know what is the cause. And mood uh, stays longer. It might be uh, hours or days in a bad mood or in a good mood. Uh, the mood has two general, uh, two main uh, uh, dimensions, which is a positive effect. This is the good mood or a negative effect. This is the bad mood. And each one of these effects, it is composed of multiple emotions. So the good mood might be happiness, uh, surprise and so on. And the bad mood is anger, sadness and so on. Uh, generally, it is not accompanied by facial expressions. That's to say, uh, if I'm in a bad mood, I'm not going to be uh, uh, having a grumpy face the whole day. If I'm in a good mood, I'm not going to smile the whole day. So it is not accompanied by facial expressions. And finally, it is cognitive in nature, which means that it is as a result of thinking. It is as a result of uh, 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 that you are going to do uh, some of uh, 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 thinking, um, trying to uh, um, uh, uh, remembering things in your mind. So it is not accompanied by actions, just things that you are going to remember in your mind, think about them. It's all to do in your memory. And then as a result, you are going to be in a good mood or in a bad mood. Uh, there are six uh, universal emotions, which are anger, fear, uh, sadness, happiness, disgust, and surprise. Let's move to the next slide to understand uh, the relationship between these six emotions. Uh, these emotions are shown uh, on the continuum. Continuum means mutawalia which are, uh, they are uh, shown uh, after each other, okay? The closer any two emotions are to each other on the continuum, the more likely people are to confuse them, which means sometimes when someone got me a present, I'm not sure whether I'm happy or surprised with that present. Sometimes when a student do something wrong in the classroom, 
I'm not sure whether I'm sad or angry with this uh, uh, with this situation. So, because happiness and surprise are after each other in the continent, I, I'm confused whether I'm happy or surprised. Uh, sadness and anger because they are after each other on the continent I'm confused whether I'm uh, sad or anger so but it is rarely we confuse happiness with anger yani it's very rare that I'm not sure whether I'm happy or angry with the situation I'm faced okay uh, here we have something called moral emotions Moral emotions is the emotions that have moral implication because of our uh, judgment on the situation that evoked them. Uh, this means that um, sometimes uh, we saw a situation and according to the situation we, we saw, we judge uh, what happened and according to our judgment, uh, we, feel we had some feelings. These feelings we have, we call it moral emotions. For example, uh, sometimes uh, we feel sympathy uh, for the suffering of other people. Uh, you know, uh, the people from um, uh, some of African countries that they are suffering, that they cannot, uh, they don't have a proper feeding uh, from the Somalian uh, countries and so on. Uh, uh, when you saw these um, kids, you feel that uh, uh, you sympathize with them, you feel that you are very angry, you feel that um, you, are, you, you, you have emotions of th sympathy according to them. Sometimes you feel anger about injustice done to others. So when you are moving in the college and, or, or in the street and you see someone hitting a small boy, and that big guy is hitting his, him in a crowd, uh, in cowardly way, and you can do nothing. So you start to feel angry, and you 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 can't do anything but just you feel angry. So these the feelings you have uh, as a result of judging a situation you saw. This is what we call moral emotions. So our response to moral emotions differ from the response to other emotions. If you are in the situation that someone did harm to you, you are going to react in another way different than when you see someone harming another one. So the moral emotions have a different reaction than the normal emotions. Moral emotions develop during your childhood. When you, your parents raise you, they raise you that you don't like injustice. They raise you that uh, you, you have sympathy towards poor people okay so you develop this uh, these moral emotions are developed during your childhood and it grow up with you as long as you live uh, cultures are different because uh, 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 some cultures uh, saw things uh, uh, that they are uh, wrong other cultures treat these things normally for example uh, uh, some countries uh, um, have child labor, other countries see that this is something cruel, okay? So the, the countries that they don't have a child labor uh, sympathize with this uh, so much and they have moral emotions toward the children that they uh, work, okay? So uh, it differs from one culture to another and so on. So moral emotions, to sum up, it is the emotions that you have according to that you saw a special uh, situation and according to this situation you judge it and according to your judgment uh, you had some feelings and these feelings uh, uh, evoked as a result of the judgment of the situations you saw. Uh, let's go to the uh, mood we have, as I told you before, uh, two basic moods, which are positive effect and negative effect. Uh, each one of them is composed of a group of emotions. Let's start by talking about the positive effect. A positive effect, this is the mood dimension, which have or contains positive emotions. These uh, positive emotions like excitement, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, يعني متحمس, 
elation, elation, which is great joy, great joy, I'm very happy. Uh, um, this is the high positive effect. On the other side, if you have a low positive effect, يعني, which means that you are uh, in a positive mood, but not high positive mood, you might be bored, يعني, you might be depressed, you might be fatigued, okay? This is the low positive effect. Let's go to the negative effect, a mood dimension, will consist of if you have a high uh, negative uh, mood or high negative effect, you're going to be nervous, you're going to be stressed, and you have high level of anxiety. But if you have low negative effect, you're going to be contendence, contendence mean qanaa, and you have, you, you're you going to be calm and serenity, serenity means safa. Okay, let's go to uh, the graph in order to understand exactly what is the high and low positive effect and high and low negative effect. Uh, it will be more clarified through the graph. Uh, here in the graph, uh, let's uh, see the, the part of a uh, high positive effect. In the high positive effect, uh, you have the excitement. In the low positive effect, you have the bored. Look with me in the high negative effect, you have the nervous. In the low negative effect, you have the relaxed. These are the four key words that you have to memorize. Don't memorize the whole graph, okay? You are supposed to memorize the four main keywords that are um, written in front of the bold um, words. High positive effect, which is the excitement, low positive effect, which is the bored, uh, high negative effect, which is the nervousness, and low negative effect, which is the relaxed. Let's look at the high positive effect. We said that high positive effect, this is a mood dimension. A mood dimension, it is a positive mood dimension. It is composed with a group of emotions. These are the good emotions. Look at them. It is excitement, elated, happy, content. Okay, but these are the group of emotions that when combined together, they put you in a good mood. The opposite of it on the other side is the low positive effect, which is when you are not in high positive effect, the opposite of the high is the low. So the opposite of the high positive is the low positive, okay? It is you are going to be sad, depressed, bored, and fatigued. So the opposite of the high positive is low positive, not opposite of positive is negative. Opposite of high positive is low positive. So it's opposite, you're going to be depressed, bored, and fatigued. Let's go to the high negative effect. We have a group of emotions that if combined together, they're going to put you in a bad mood, which is the high negative effect. You're going to be tense, nervous, stressed, upset. If you are tense, nervous, stressed, upset, this is going to put you in a high negative effect. The opposite of a high negative effect is low negative. The opposite of the high is the low. Low negative effect, you're going to be calm, relaxed, serene, and content. Okay? Uh, we can say that uh, for most people, uh, positive moods are more common than negative mood. Uh, we can say that people start their day with a positive mood. At zero input, with no uh, particular event happened, uh, people start their day at positive mood. This is what we call positively offset. The word offset means uh, at the beginning or at the start. Uh, when we compare different cultures, we can see that uh, people experience uh, positive and negative emotions uh, differently across culture. Uh, the reason behind that uh, is not that people of various cultures are different. Uh, type. Uh, what makes uh, this happen uh, is that uh, some culture value certain emotions more than others. Uh, this leads the individuals to change their perspective on experiencing those emotions. For example, if certain uh, culture varies the emotions of um, uh, love and happiness more than the other culture, so these people are going to have a more positive mood than the other culture. 
So uh, it's all about the value of uh, the values uh, that these culture uh, concentrate on rather than the other uh, culture. Uh, moving now to a very important question, which is, do you think that emotions uh, makes us irrational in making our decisions? Uh, unfortunately, uh, many people think that uh, when you express your emotions uh, to others, this is going to make you ir irrational in making your decisions. And when you express your emotions in public or in your work, this is not uh, going to make you as popular as you're going to be, or this is not uh, going to make you a good uh, manager. Uh, this is not true. Research has shown that emotions are necessary for rational decision making. It helps people to make better decisions and understand the world around you. You have to express to people how do you feel. You have to tell them that you love them. If you are angry from someone, go and tell him I'm angry from you because so and so. If you love someone, tell him that you love them. It's very healthy to tell people how do you feel express your emotions because this is the only way that you can get the things from inside of you to the world so that you feel better so you can think right don't let your emotions inside of you so that you feel very stressed though so and as a result you cannot take the right decision if you are going to make a good decision you have to incorporate both thinking and feeling. So the rational decision making, it depends on both thinking and feeling. You have to think and to judge. And at the same time, you have to use your inner feeling. You have to feel you, ha you, you are a human being. So you have to incorporate both thinking and feeling in order to take the right decision. The, th the, the second question uh, I want to ask you about, do you think that emotions makes us ethical? Uh, the research on moral emotions question uh, the, the belief that emotional decision making is based on high, highest level of uh, uh, cognitive process. Uh, unfortunately, uh, many people when they tend to judge and punish out group members, out group members, I mean by it that people that are not in our group, uh, they punish them or judge them harshly for moral, uh, uh, يعني, for anything they do uh, incorrectly than in group members, even if they are trying to be objective. So uh, emotions, uh, to a great extent, they make people unethical, our beliefs are shaped by our groups, resulting in unconscious response and shared emotion, uh, moral emotions. Uh, when I'm trying to punish someone, without, in, in my subconscious, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, uh, uh, I'm not doing this on purpose, uh, in my subconscious, uh, when I'm trying, when I'm going to punish someone, I'm, I'm, I will punish people outside my area, outside my group, in a harsh way, more than I'm going to punish the people inside my group. If I'm going to um, give a reward to someone, I'm going to reward the people inside my group more than the reward I'm going to give to people outside my group. So uh, this may allow us to justify purely emotional reaction as rationally ethical because we share them with others. For يعني, unfortunately, emotions makes us uh, uh, unethical to a great extent. Uh, so what are the main sources of emotions and mood? And this is a very good question. We have 10 uh, main sources of emotions and mood. We're going to discuss them in the following five slides. First uh, is the personality. Uh, moods and emotions have uh, a characteristic component, meaning that it's according to the personality. Some people experience certain moods and emotions more frequently than others. It's according to your personality. 
I am a sensitive person. I express my emotions and moods more than you. Uh, another person is not sensitive. They don't show their feelings. They don't show their emotions. So it's about the personality, okay? Uh, people experience the same emotions, but with different intensity. Affect intensity means how strongly the people experience their emotion. Do I experience my emotion heavenly? Yeah, when I'm happy, I'm really happy. When I'm sad, I'm really sad. This is what we mean by the word effectively intense. Yeah, the people who are effectively intense, they uh, express their emotions either positive or negative deeply. When they are happy, they are really happy. When they are sad, they are de uh, really sad. So, uh, uh, the first thing or the first source of uh, emotions and mood is the personality. It depends on your personality. It depends on your characteristics. Okay. The second source of emotions and mood is the time of the day. People vary in their mood according to the time of the day. According to the uh, research, there is a common pattern for all of the people, but most of the people are happier in the middle of the day. Uh, I mean by the middle of the day is the midpoint of the daily awake period. And for example, if you are awake for 12 hours, see which 12 hours you are awake. And in the sixth hour, you're going to be the happiest. Come on, yeah, you're supposed to wake more than 12 hours, but I'm giving you an example. So if you are awake for 12 hours, see which 12 hours you are awake. So in the middle of these 12 hours, in the sixth hours, you're going to be the happiest hour for time for you or the best mood for you. The third thing or the third source of emotions and mood is the day of the week. Most of the people are happier toward, uh, towards the end of the week, the weekend. Think about the Thursday. All of us are very happy on Thursday because we are going to have a weekend. We are having a lot of uh, um, uh, plans for the weekend. So most of the people are having a positive mood towards going on Thursday because this is our weekend happily. Fourth is the weather. Uh, people think that there is a, a, a relation between the weather and the mood, but unfortunately, this is wrong. Research did not show that there is a relation between mood and the weather. So what people think is something wrong. This is what we call illusionary correlation. Illusionary Illusionary correlation explain why people tend to think that nice weather improves their mood. Some people say, I like the spring. In the spring, it's my good mood. Other people say, winter is my good mood. Other people, a third group of people say, the summer is my good mood. This, there is no relation between mood and the weather. It, it is illusionary correlation. This occurs when people associate two events that in reality they have no co correlation or no connect connection according to the research. Another source of emotions is the stress. Even if you have low level of constant stress, this worsen your mood. So if you are working under stress, if you are studying under stress, if you have any type of stress, this is going to worsen your mood. Uh, another source of emotional mood is the social activity. Research uh, found that physical, informal activities, even going uh, for dining with your friends, this is going to improve your uh, positive mood. So when you find yourself in a bad mood, go do some activities, informal activities, go uh, out with your friends. This is going to improve your mood. Uh, something else, which is the sleep. Poor sleep quality increased negative effect. You have to sleep properly. Sleep properly at night. You have to have your eight hours of sleep at night in order to have to, to wake up in a good mood. If people did not have the right time uh, or the right number of hours and they sleep uh, with interruptions, they're going to wake up in a bad mood. So uh, poor sleep quality, it increased the negative effect. Uh, another thing is the exercise. Exercise does somewhat improve the mood, especially for depressed people. When you find someone depressed, 
Try to convince him or her to do some exercise, even walking, even running, going to the gym. Any type of exercise according to his or her health is going to improve their mood. Uh, let's talk about age. Uh, older people tend to focus more on positive stimuli than younger adults. I mean by positive stimuli, they tend to self-regulate by trying to increase the positivity in their attention and memory. They don't re try to think about negative things. Always they try to remember the positive part of their life. They stress on the positive things. They try to memorize the positive things, they try to remember the positive things, so they concentrate on what's positive to, to, uh, to increase their positive mood. Last but not least, uh, let's talk about the sex. Uh, uh, women tend to be more emotionally expressive. Uh, they feel their emotions more intensely. Uh, they have long-lasting moods and express emotions more frequently than men. So. Please take care. Women are more sensitive. Uh, they like to express their emotions. Uh, they have uh, um, uh, more intensity in their emotions. When they love one, they really love him or her. Uh, when they are angry, they are really angry or sad. So, uh, uh, and their mood lasts for a longer period of time than men. Than men. So, there is, there is a difference in the mood between a woman and men. Uh, we mean by emotional labor, uh, the employee's expression of the emotions uh, desired by the organization uh, during the employee's interpersonal transactions at work. Uh, this means that uh, the employee uh, has to uh, express certain emotions uh, that are uh, desirable by the organization uh, during his or her interaction with others inside the organization, regardless he or she uh, really feels that or not, uh, they have to uh, express those uh, emotions inside uh, the organization. The emotions that has to be expressed, we call them emotional labor. Uh, we have two uh, types of emotions. Uh, one is called felt emotions and the other is uh, displayed emotions. Felt emotions are the individual's actual emotions, the real emotions that the individual feels. We call them the felt emotions. Displayed emotions are the required or the appropriate emotions that people has to show. Displayed emotions has two types. First, we call it surface acting. Surface acting means hiding the feeling or uh, foregoing emotional expression in response to display rules. This means that I have to show something. According to the rules, I have to show special emotions. So I'm going to hide my inner feelings and show what is required from me. And I and I'm not going to show what's really inside uh, inside me. So I'm going to act hamasil, surfacely, uh, that I'm feeling so and so. But deep inside, this is not how I'm going to feel. The other type is the deep acting. Deep acting means trying to modify the true inner feeling based on the displayed rule. I know that I have to show sympathy for example why not that i try to modify my inner feeling so that so that i feel sympathy really why not to try to feel this from inside i'm going to modify how do i feel so that it is exactly i'm going to feel exactly like what i'm going to show so surface acting i'm going to hide how do i feel and i'm going to act as if I'm feeling okay, I'm going to do whatever the organization told me. Deep acting, I'm going to med modify how I feel so that it is, uh, 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 yani it is uh, uh, so that it is matched with the uh, feeling the organization asked me to show. Uh, emotional dissonance happens uh, when there is inconsistency between the emotions uh, 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 people feel inside the organization and the emotions they have to show. There is incompatibility between how do they feel 
and what they are supposed to show. Um, when there is a long-term emotional dissonance, uh, this is a predictor for job burnout. Burnout means fatigue, frustration, um, and so on. Uh, uh, and also, this is a predictor of declining in the job performance uh, and, uh, of course, low job satisfaction because they are showing things that they are not really feeling. As a result, they are not going to perform well, they are not satisfied in their job, and they are uh, fatigued and they are feeling fatigued and they are frustrated. Uh, emotional intelligence uh, is a three-step process. It starts by uh, that a person perceives the emotions inside himself and the emotions in the person in front of him. This is the first step. Then uh, they have to understand the meaning of these emotions. What's the meaning of my emotions and what is the meaning of the emotions in the person in, so in front of me? And then the third step is regulating my emotions according in accordingly in a cascading model that is shown in the following uh, uh, figure. Uh, this uh, figure shows uh, the uh, cascading model of emo uh, emotional intelligence. Uh, emotional intelligence means is the al atifi. Um, it starts by the block on the up left, which is the conscious, uh, you start uh, in the conscious process that uh, someone uh, starts in, he, you uh, as, a, as a person starts your conscious process that you perceive the emotions in self and the other. You start to understand that uh, uh, you have emotions towards someone and you start to uh, feel these emotions and perceive them and uh, to uh, perceive the emotions in the person in front of you. Then go to the second process, which is the cognitive ability. Cognitive means ma'rifa. Cognitive ability that you start to think about, uh, think by by your mind about uh, what's the emotions inside of you and the emotions uh, inside of the other. Try to understand what does this mean. Understand uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, what's the real emotions and what's the real uh, 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 meaning of the emotions from your side and from the other side. Understand the meaning of these emotions and then go to the third part, which is the emotional stability. Re what's mean by emotional stability? Regulate the emotions. Regulate your emotions to be suitable to the one in front of you. Don't give too much when you understand that the one in front of you is not giving that uh, back to you or don't give too little when the one in front of you is giving you too much so try to make the relation a balanced one try to give as much as you take don't give too much to one is not giving to you and don't give give too little uh, don't give little to someone giving you too much so you have to have emotional stability stabilize the relation make it a balanced relation according to understanding in the step before understand your emotion and the one in front of you and according to this understanding regulate your emotion to make it a balanced and healthy relationship Emotion regulations means identifying and modifying the emotions you feel. For example, when you are angry, you can calm yourself. Uh, when you are feeling down, you can cheer up yourself. So this is means emotion regulation. Okay, uh, inside the organization, when you have diversity in the work group, uh, this may help us to regulate our emotions. Uh, more effectively. For example, if you have a group of workers and it is there is a high diversity, younger people uh, are going to regulate, uh, are, are going to have more emotion regulator, regulations uh, in order to fit uh, more in, uh, into the elder uh, group. So uh, if there are a group of elder people and few younger people, the youngers are willing to uh, change uh, how do they feel. They're going to have emotional regulations in order 
easier to fit into the uh, older or elder group uh, age. So this is what we mean by uh, emotion regulations. Uh, the last part uh, in this uh, chapter is how to apply the concepts uh, of uh, emotions and moods to the uh, specific OB uh, issues. Uh, first, uh, in the selection uh, of um, candidates uh, that are uh, suitable for specific jobs, uh, emotional intelligence uh, should be a hiring factor, especially for social jobs, jobs that are um, uh, having interaction with people inside the organization, uh, 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 employees that are going to interact directly with people inside the organization, they have to have emotional intelligence. They have to know how to regulate the, their emotions, have to, how to uh, show uh, their emotions uh, in suitable degree, and how to interact uh, with people. So when you are selecting selecting candidates to work in social uh, um, jobs, please uh, don't forget the uh, idea of uh, social intelligence in your selection criteria. Second, in the decision-making uh, process, uh, always remember that positive emotions can always lead to better decisions. When you are in a positive mood, when you have positive emotions, this is going to let you to have a brighter uh, uh, idea or brighter view of what is going to happen. So uh, you can think in a better way and have a better decision. When you are in a negative mood, you are going to see everything dark. So you, you cannot think in the right way. So you, are, you might have a bad decision or a wrong decision. Third is creativity. Positive mood increases the flexibility, the openness and creativity of the person because when you are in, in a good mood, you can think uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, a positive way. Uh, you can um, uh, gather uh, the information correctly. Uh, you uh, will uh, uh, solve the problem uh, with another point of view than in, if you are in a bad mood. When you are in a bad mood, you cannot concentrate. You cannot, you cannot think in uh, the correct way. Also, motivation. Uh, uh, positive mood affects the expectation of success. When you are in a positive mood, you will think that uh, you are going to success. Uh, what is the way to success? How I'm going to succeed? But if you are in a bad mood, you are going to think I'm going to fail. Uh, I will not do so and so. I cannot do so and so. So always uh, uh, try to motivate people. Uh, try to put people in a positive mood because positive mood is the first way to uh, success of your inclusion and feedback uh, amplify or magnify um, positive feedback I mean magnify this effect when you give your employees a positive feedback this is going to motivate them and this is going to lead them to success leadership uh, emotions are important uh, to accepting uh, messages from your leaders. If you have positive emotions towards your leaders, your, your leader, you're going to accept his orders. You're going to accept whatever he's going to tell you. But if you have negative emotions towards your leader, you cannot accept from him anything. You're going, you're going to uh, follow the orders, but you're, you're not going to do them. Um, the way if you have a good emotions from your leaders. So try to have good, uh, try to get the best emotions from your employees so that they are going to follow your orders with a different way and you're going to get their best to uh, satisfy you. And they're going to do the work in completely different manner. Negotiation. Also, emotions can affect negotiation. If you have good emotions with the people you are ne negotiating with, you're going to get the best results. You're going to have a win-win situation. And this is what we want inside the organization. Uh, go to the customer service. Emotions also influence the customer service. When you have good emotions with the customers, uh, customers will have repeated business with you and they will have customer satisfaction. Don't ever show bad emotions to your customers. Don't ever be aggressive with your customers. Don't show that you are angry. Don't even in your voice tone show that you are sad today, angry. 
they are your customers. You have to cheer up your customers, okay? We have someone called emotional contagion. Contagion means adwa. Emotional contagion means that customers catch emotions from the employee. Sometimes uh, when you go, for example, to a bank teller and you are standing in front of the bank teller and he is in a very, very bad mood and he is treating you badly, you leave the bank teller and you get out of the bank and you are holding the bad emotions and bad mood with you. This is what we call emotional contagion. So try to please your customers. Try to give him positive emotions so that they come back to you. They have a repeated business with you. Okay. And uh, uh, we have also the work-life satisfaction. Uh, a good day at work is carried with you at home. It is followed by a good day at home. If you have a good mood at work, your mood is going to be good at home. If you have a bad mood at work, you're going to take that bad mood at home. So I know that this don't last too long and it's going to disappear by night, but uh, try to have good moods at your work so that you complete your day in a good mood. Don't stay long time with uh, bad moods. Life is short. Try to live your life happily in a good mood. So try to have work-life satisfaction. Try to have satisfaction in your work. Deviant work uh, plays behavior. People with negative emotions, they are going to experience workplace deviant behavior. I told you before, workplace deviant behavior means that people are going to express actions that violate the uh, norms or the rules of the organization and they're going to threaten the organization. Maybe they're not going to do something very, um, very uh, bad, but they are going to do uh, bad attitudes inside the organization. As I told you before, they might torn papers, they might uh, push the, the, the furniture uh, to the wall, they might uh, torn something, uh, the, the computers they are uh, working with. So these are bad attitudes. Uh, people with bad um, you know, uh, negative emotions, they are going to express work deviant behavior. Safety and injury at work. Don't ever do dangerous work while in a bad mood because this might uh, take you to a place where you have injuries and uh, uh, might harm your safety. Uh, by this part, uh, we have finished chapter uh, six, which is emotions and mood. Please read the part of implications for management managers. This is just this part for reading. Also, uh, this is uh, just for reading. Uh, this part containing uh, some MCQ questions and true or false, uh, please, uh, after finishing uh, this chapter, uh, solve uh, these uh, questions. Uh, and uh, if you need anything, just email me and I, uh, I will be happy to uh, answer all of you. Good luck, my dear students.